All right, guys, I'm working on the lines, transversals, and more Schoology assignment. Hopefully, this is, will help you get through it. All right, first picture, we just have a triangle. How many degrees are in a triangle? We know they have to add up to 180 degrees. Angle 2 is 93. Angle 3 is 51. So it's 180 minus 93 minus 51. 180 minus 93 minus 51, and I get 36 degrees. Boom. Not much to that one. Next question. We have the measure of angle 2 is 103 degrees. The measure of angle 3 is 51 degrees. Find the measure of angle 4. Since I don't know what I'm going to call it x. Our rule that we just learned is that remote plus remote equals E, and these are the two remotes for angle 4 there. So I would say that 103 plus 51 has to equal X. So that would be 154. It's not the only way to do it, but uh, that's the way to do it using our new rule. Use the figure to determine the angle pair relationship. Let's take a look. So there's a few things I'm looking for in here. Let's see what we do. So angle 1 and angle 5. Angle 1, if I trace angle 1, we got this line and this line. If I trace angle 5, I got this line and this line. So they share this, this one. That's called the transversal. And the other two lines would be the two orange ones. Well... What kind of shape do they make? If you remember from my hints, that's like the letter C. It's facing upward, but it's like this thing. And the inside corners of that is going to be same side interior. Those are on the same side of the transversal, and they're in between the other two lines. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one is angle 6. Trace angle 6. And angle 2, trace angle 2. So here's the transversal for 6 and 2. This is the other line for 2. This is the other line for 6. Okay, a little bit more confusing perhaps. But as you can see, like they're still in between. That's still inside, and they're on the same side of the transversal. So that is another SSI. They're on the same side of the transversal. If you remember, this was the transversal here. They were on the same side of that. All right, we're killing it so far. All right, next one is angle one and three. Trace angle one, trace angle three. So this is the transversal. And the other two lines, by the way, they're on the same side. So when you draw that transversal, I should have been saying that. They're on the same side. So we know they're same side already. The other two lines for these would be here and here. So if I'm looking at this, 3 is on the inside, but 1 is on the outside. If you remember, if there's 1 inside and 1 outside, and they're on the same side, that is called corresponding angles. So that is corresponding angles. And then the last group, angle 3 and 7, if I trace angle 3, and I trace angle 7, this is the line that they have in common, so that's the transversal. So I know it's alternating. They're on different sides of the transversal. Here's the other line for 3. Here's the other line for 7. Where are 3 and 7? They are both in between. They are in between the other two lines. So it is alternating interior angles. Oh. All right, same picture. It says the measure of angle 5 equals 56. The measure of angle 3 equals 42. So 56 and 42. Find the measure of the rest of the angles. These arrows, if you see arrows like this on lines, it indicates that they go the same direction. If they go the same direction, we know that they're parallel. So we do know they're parallel. We're going we, to have to use parallel properties. Might be kind of hard to see, but we, we kind of just... We're kind of looking at this before. Like if I look here... Angle 1 and 5, those are same side interior angles. Now, remember the lines have to be parallel. So like 6 and 2, if I look at 6 and 2, 
like these two lines are not parallel. There's no properties for six and two, at least not parallel line properties. But one and five are same side interior, and they have parallel line properties. So 180 minus 56 can be 124 degrees. So angle one's got to be 124. We can always do linear pairs, but also we could, if you look at this, if I were to trace angle five going this way, if I turn angle two and five, make the letter Z, those are alternating interior angles, so they have to be equal. And there's going to be more than one way to get these. So if you, if you got it a different way, don't sweat it. There's lots of ways to get these answers as long as you're executing it correctly. Over here, angle 3 and 4, they make a linear pair. So 180 minus 42 would have to be 138. And then 4 and 7 is just like 1 and 5. That's a same side interior. They use the parallel lines. So 4 and 7, this would have to be 42 as well. We could have also done the letter Z. Those are alternate interior angles. So if you remember the letter Z, alternate interior angles, they're going to be equal if the lines are parallel. The letter C, same side interior angles, are going to be supplementary if the lines are parallel. All right. And then angle 6 here, there's a few ways to get it. But you could look at these three angles. They have to add up to 180. 56 plus 42 is going to be 98. So that would have to be 82. So angle 2 is coming in at 56. Angle 4, 138. Angle 6, 82. And angle 7, 42. Looking great. Let me check my work. Yep, I like it. All right. Next one, number five, angle two, they tell us here is 3x plus 20. Angle three is 4x minus 2. And angle four is 9x minus 10. Okay. Solve for angle four. So this would be hard to do without our new rule. Our new rule is remote plus remote equals E. That means 3 plus 2 equals 4. You can go watch that other video if you need another explanation on that. But 3x plus 20 plus 4x minus 2 equals 9x minus 10. So 7x plus 18 equals 9x minus 10. 2x equals 28. x equals 14. So I'm going to take 14, I'm going to plug it in for x. So 3 times 14 plus 20, this comes in at 62. 4 times 14 minus 2 comes in at 54. And 9 times 14 minus 10 comes in at 116. So I, 62 plus 54 is 116, so I know I did it right. So angle 4 comes in at 116 degrees. Nice. All right. Got some fun pictures here. We know that AB is perpendicular to BC, so this corner is 90 degrees. That's what they're saying. We know that angle 10 is 64 degrees. Okay, well, that means this guy has to be 26 degrees, right? So we know they have to add up to 90. So we already know angle 3 is 26 degrees. Angle 6 is 57 degrees. Well, we're just zooming because we know that angle 6 and 10, um, when you add those up, would have to equal angle 5. So that's 11 plus 111. That's 121. Yeah. 11 plus 110, I meant to say. So angle 5, 121. And then the one next to it here would have to be 59. Angle 2 is going to come in at 59. Those are a linear pair. You could have got the triangle first if you wanted and then got angle 5. Uh, then they tell us angle D is 41 degrees. Well, these three angles make a triangle. 
So angle 1 would be 180 minus 121 minus 41. So 180, 139. I'm just going to type it in. I don't want to mess up. I get 18 degrees over here. And then uh, what do we have? Angle 4. Angle 4, there's a few ways you could get it. This is vertical. That would be 121. So I could do 180 minus 121 minus 26. And I get 33 degrees. So angle 1 clocks in at 18. Angle 4 clocks in at 33. This is just using your parallel, not parallel lines, the perpendicular line um, and your triangle properties. That's all this one is. There's multiple routes to these answers. You did not have to get them the way that I did. TR is perpendicular to JQ, so that means this is perpendicular. That means this is a 90 degree angle. It's going to be 90 degrees on both sides of that, just so we remember. Angle 11 coming in at 52. So if that's 52, then I know that this has to be 38, right? Because those three angles have to make a triangle. So this is a right triangle. We know that this is 90 because of the right angle. So then we have uh, 38 and 52. That means this is 38. I don't know if that's going to be helpful, but I do know that it's true. Um, we have angle 11 is 52. Oh, I did that. Angle J is 47. Here's J down here coming in at 47. Well, if that's 38 and 47, that would be 70 plus 15 would be 85, which means angle 7 would have to be 95. So angle 7 comes in at 95. Um, well, what else can we do? Oh, and there's parallel lines. So I should read the whole thing. J, K is parallel to TQ. Okay, now we're talking. Now we're talking. So those are parallel lines. So I'm looking, my first instinct every time I have parallel lines is the letter Z and the letter C. And I definitely see the letter Z. If I trace this 47, start on a parallel line, turn on the transversal, and keep going until you hit the next parallel line. A mistake people make is they go and they turn like here, but those are not parallel lines. This and this are not parallel, so that doesn't do anything for us, guys. We can't do that. When we're tracing, we start on a parallel line, we turn, that makes the first angle, and we keep going until we hit the next parallel line, and then we turn again. So I know that this spot has to be 47 degrees. Those have to be equal because they're alternate interior and the lines are parallel. Well, that means this angle has to be 43 because we have another triangle situation over here. If you look at this green shape, that would be a triangle. And we had a 90 and a 47, leaving us with 43. And then angle 9 next to it would be a linear pair. So that's going to be 133. So angle 8 comes in at 43. Angle 9 comes in at 133. That's a hard problem. Find the measure of the indicated angles using the given. So we have CA. Oh, and I made a mistake here. I don't have the right picture. So I did not put the right picture in there. But I can go to the next one. So number eight, I'll have to make on another video. All right, number nine. Three angles of a triangle measure that. Well, we know that they have to add up to 180. So x squared plus 64 plus 5x plus 15 plus x plus 29 has to equal 180. So x squared, that would be 5x, 6x. 64 plus 15 would be 79, 99, 108. So that's going to be plus 108 has to equal 180. So we clean it up. We have two, two things that have to happen. X squared has to stay positive. 
and one side needs to be zero. So I'm going to subtract the 180. So x squared plus 6x minus 72. Now we have one side zero. Now this is something that we can factor. Factoring, if you remember, it's the factors of 72 that have to subtract to equal 6. Um, that's going to be 12 and 6. So x and 12, x and 6, and I want positive 6, so it's going to be plus and minus. So x would equal negative 12 or positive 6. I've got to try both answers out. Um, do I see any issues immediately? Yes. If I plug in negative 12 here, that's, I mean, that's, that's going to be no good. Right? 5 times negative 12 plus 15 is going to be a negative answer. Negative 60 is going to be negative 45. It can't be that. So the negative 12 is out. Let's try 6. Does 6 work everywhere? If I plug in 6, I would have 36 plus 64. That's 100. That's okay. I plug in 6, I would have 30 plus 15. That's 45. Plug in 6, I would have 35. Those are great. So x must be 6. And the triangle would be, well, if I have this 100 degree angle here, that would make it an obtuse triangle. All right, guys. Hopefully that made sense.